your life. Taking all the sunshine, bottle up the rain, go where the wind blows, let it show the way, open all the windows, let in all the light, you can pull the stars down, paint the perfect sky, so go and write your song, the world will sing along. second of the 10th 2020 the year of covid uh and i am here with tony turner and uh we're going to be doing a tony turner this is your life uh with most of the information coming from tony turner himself uh, aka pa so pa uh, yeah. we have got a bunch of fun questions uh that we want to go through uh, yeah. Because there's a lot more to you than just a flannel shirt and the cowboy hat. Uh, so let's start off with uh, where did you grow up? Where did I grow up? I grew up in England, uh, in the north of England, in an industrial area. It was quite uh, uh, full on. Uh, uh, chimneys and smoke belching out everywhere. Back in the coal days, a lot back, of coal. It was uh, 
I lived in a, a, an area that did uh, the process cotton. The cotton used to be brought in from overseas, say from India or South America, and in bags, and it used to be processed into yarn in these mills. And there were probably a hundred of them around. A hundred cotton mills? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we have uh, just been talking about your cotton yarn um, cotton mills, yeah. and cotton mills and this is back in England yes because you grew up in England yeah yes in Lancashire Lancashire yeah that's the, 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 is that northern and middle of England or at the bottom it's uh, north it's halfway up you could say Halfway up? Yeah, northwest. Northwest? Yeah. So North Lancashire's on one side and Yorkshire is on the other side, taking out the four woods. Okay. Yeah. All right, cool. And we'll see if we can find that uh, on the Google in a moment. All right, so you grew up, so how old were you when you were growing up with all the, the coal and it was very, you know, well, bad air and all that kind of stuff? Uh, it's hard to get, get a, a memory from when you're a baby. You just don't, you don't keep, um, uh, nothing sticks from when you were a kid. Yeah, yeah, time is um, relevant. Time is like, <laughs> what is time when you're like five? Uh, at the age of two years old, I developed um, a disease called tuberculosis. Tuberculosis. Tuberculosis? Yeah, in my spine. And uh, so I was put into a, a hospital. It was a magnificent hospital out in the country. Um, similar, is it similar to this view behind us? Uh, very similar, yeah. So you were You'd five see, years old? I was two years old when I went in. You were two years old when you went in with yeah. tuberculosis? Yeah. Whoa, okay. And I was uh, eight years old when I came out. Hold on, so you spent from the age of two to, to eight years old? Yeah, about six in, and a half years. Six and a half, seven yeah. years in a hospital. So, I was, all, all I knew was what happened in the hospital. Everything before that just ceased to exist. I forgot. I forgot well, everything before two years old. Yeah. And um, and so this was my life for the the other boys in in our ward would probably be uh, maybe forty boys. <laughs> it's Whoa. a long ward. A big massive ward, yeah. 40 boys. Boys. And how old were they, roughly? Uh, they'd be from, say, 2 to 14 years old. And then they were moved to um, the men's ward after that. Right. Sometimes I stayed there till they were 16. And so what would a day-to-day a, a -day view of your life be? during that, that time in the a hospital? Day-to-day, -day, well, tuberculosis is a disease which can attack many organs, but in this case it was my bones. And what it does is it gets into your bones and turns them chalky. Wow, so, so it'd be quite, so chalk, it'd be like takes the stiff but easily to break. Yes. So, to keep my back straight, they built a frame um, my size and it was padded with, uh, say, leather, you know, and I was strapped to that in bed to keep my back straight. And I stayed like that for many years so I spent a lot of years looking at the sky 
and studying the formation of clouds and making uh, figures out of them, you know, using my imagination. Now, we used to be allowed visitors once a month for three hours, three hours a month. My parents would come wow. um, and this, my sister and visit uh, and my grandparents would too. Uh, they'd all come and visit. And, uh, Jeez. and so then they'd leave. Now, I couldn't, all I could see was the fields outside with cows in the background on, on an embankment. Uh, lots of trees. It was a nice place to be. To, to be isolated because uh, it was considered to be a contagious disease and that's why it was built out there. Right. But the type of I had, it wasn't contagious. You couldn't, you couldn't breathe it into somebody. You know. I actually contracted the disease from milk. Um, hadn't been sterilized. Wow. The cow had tuberculosis. So it passed it on through its milk. So wow. Yeah. Wow. So yeah. So and then so, wow. Is that and that's obviously re one of the reasons why we pasteurize milk and go yeah, through a whole so process now. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so the day to day uh, process would be uh, the nurses going about their, their jobs, uh, making beds, uh, cleaning up after you, um, and, and talking to the, pe the, the boys next to you, you know. Uh, so let's put some perspective around it. You were from two to seven or eight years old. <laughs> Stuck in a bed, strapped down. Looking at the sky. You're looking at the sky. I suppose that might move your bed a little bit now and then. Looking at this one field, so one scenery, the sky, which thankfully changes a little bit. Yeah. And you only got to visit, see your parents or family once a month. 12 times a year. Yeah. 12 visits the whole year. Yeah. Wow. So 36 hours all up. Jeez. Yeah. And so, were they trying to school you during this period, or was there much schooling? Uh, no. If some some of the patients could get out and and walk, they could get out of their beds and they could get dressed and they could walk around. Um, and providing they stayed within the hospital grounds, that was fine. You know, they used to play cricket. Uh, so they were the lucky ones. They were the lucky ones, yeah. And they also had a schoolhouse there for them to go to. They went to school, but anyone that was confined to bed, um, they had a sort of a sort of a teacher, but it was mainly uh, uh, to do with occupational therapy making things to keep you busy. Yeah. Like it might be basket weaving or And you got to do a bit of that? Yeah. Or or embroidery. You know, yeah. they give you a big piece of material uh with a, a pattern drawn on it and you got to kind of embroider could be a triangle. Now I remember seeing a lot of this stuff in your house. Is yeah. that you or Nan? Is that you doing the embroidery or Nan doing the embroidery? Oh, she does, that. she does that. <laughs> I gave that away when I left there. Um, but it, it was it was just something to uh, to keep you occupied. And they tried to to, to teach you basic uh, English and spelling. Uh, so there's some type of schooling, but not much. 
Right? There's some type of schooling. Some. No. Yeah. Basic arithmetic and English. Mainly. Like they they might have a a big coloured picture on stuck to a blackboard and say I want you to tell me all the things that you can see on there starting with the letter, so S. And so that that got you learning. Yeah, know. it got your brain trying yeah. to build pathways yeah. and all the rest yeah. of the stuff that it does. So So then okay, eight years old, what happened to after that? How did you get well taken out of that environment? Okay. Eventually um new drugs were being made penicillin came along and it it, it knocked it on the head so you this is pre-penicillin yeah for, for our for our use it just seems i mean for someone like me that's grown up in the world of penicillin yeah it just seems foreign that something like that didn't exist they tried all sorts of different drugs you get injected with every day but, uh, Wait, so they're injecting you a lot with different things trying to solve it? Yeah. Wow. But penicillin really hit the spot. And it wow, went. so penicillin, yeah. boom, done. And how quickly was it so how quickly was it for you once you got the first penicillin shot to you going, Oh, I can do things again? Well it was well, it's a slow process because First of all, you've got to stop the disease from spreading. You've got to kill it to begin with. And then you have to um, fix up the damage it's done. Yeah. So I had, I had two operations on my spine to s try and straighten things out. It didn't straighten it out completely, but... Um, yeah, they straightened it out, and eventually, after quite a few years, I was allowed to get out of bed wow. and uh, go home. Wow. Now, bear in mind, I hadn't seen a car. I'd never been on a bus. I'd seen pictures of them. <laughs> I'd seen pictures wow. of them. So wait, you'd never yeah. seen a car, no. never seen a bus. Never been. So no. there's a lot of life that most kids are brought up with. They would have just been so foreign to you. Okay, t tell us about the first time when you got released from this hospital and started experiencing things like this. Well, the first time was when um, we got on the bus to leave the hospital. It was a special bus that took us to the nearest railway station. And I was absolutely fascinated by traffic lights changing colour. I, I, I was bringing everybody's attention to this traffic light <laughs> that we were stuck at that was on red. And it, it changed to green. Did you see that? Did you see the ch change colour? Up a go. <laughs> so that's, so yeah. whereas most people, so that's, that's funny, like all these little simple things which uh, no one would pay any attention to or think anything special of, it was just mesmerising. Yeah, and so, um, of course, you make mistakes because uh, as you're growing up, your parents usually teach you what to say and what not to say. Right. What, 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 what's acceptable and what isn't. And so I made so many blunders. <laughs> all, the, all the cold and, school. And there was red faces all around. Do you remember yeah. any in particular? Um, I can't remember exactly, but I, I, I just always remember. I made a lot of mistakes. Making your parents embarrassed. Yeah. And uh, 
yeah, my parents were standing away from me trying to disown me, you know. <laughs> yeah. I could imagine you, you know, your parents take you to the shops or something and then you just being mesmerised by, you know, like a cashier or a teller machine or something like this. Yeah. And everyone going, what is wrong with this kid? Not realising that you know, this might have been the first time you'd ever seen such a thing. That's right. That's right. And to get it's a lot to absorb, hey. It's a lot to absorb. And um, so the first six months, I would say, uh, after leaving the hospital, was just learning about worldly things around you. And no worries. All right, so that leads us up to you know your terrible teens, um, and obviously then you'd be entering school. Well, I suppose did you go to school? Yes, I went to school at the age of probably eight and a half years. Early going on nine and the headmaster at my school um, he luckily he'd had luckily for me anyway not for him he'd had um, a bad uh, been through a bad situation because there was a lot of polio around there and, right. and people, polio is um, a disease that get, it attacks the muscles, particularly in the legs, and, and they can, it leaves them with a terrible limp. Yeah. And so he'd been through all this, and he said, you haven't been to school yet, but he said, I'm going to put you in um, the class of your age. And the teacher will give you little exercises to do. So what, what, how old, what, what year level was this? It would be one, two, three, there'd be infants, there'd be infants, and then one, two, junior, one, two, three. So a year, year three. Year three, four. 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 So you'd never done any school I mean, you're thrusted into year three or four. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, but I listen, even though um, I was given um, um, easy arithmetic to do, and, and the teacher gradually built it up harder and harder. Um, as far as the uh, English side goes, I was all right. I could write. You could read, write. Yeah, which is pretty good. Yeah, so I was. I could understand what she was saying, and yeah, and, yeah. Um, uh, yes, um, I used to love it because every afternoon um, the teacher would read a, a story to us, open the book, and read a story, uh, so, well, so many pages of a story, maybe half an hour, and it could be an adventure story, and everybody's glued to what she was saying, you know. Um, she used to read um, Enid Blyton books, and it was uh, uh, adventure books for boys, you know, yeah. and girls. Yeah. So, so that I, I did enjoy it, and eventually... Um, two years later, how old would I be? 13, I'd be close to 13 years old, 12 and a half, 13, and I had an opportunity to go to a higher, a higher school. Um, it was called a, a technical school where they 
they taught you more advanced things like chemistry, uh, architecture, engineering. Um, it was really interesting. Uh, so I had to go do a to a, pass an exam to go do it. And of course the teachers were saying, don't get your hopes up too much. You haven't had much schooling, you know. And I'm saying, no, I'll just do my best, you know. And I got through. Wow. I got there. That's an extraordinary path. I mean, I mean, that's the, the path I know. I mean, the path I know is, I, I, and I think the family is the same. We all look to you as someone that, if there's some, if we need to know something or try to figure something out, it's always, oh, I'll go see Pa. He'll know how to do it. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I mean, I don't know who, who you haven't helped with homework or studies or anything. Everyone in the family, you've been a part of all that. Yeah. So that would make sense. So you, you, you joined school late, you caught up, and overtook, overtook them, did the exam, and got entered into a more prestigious school, cool, yeah. which obviously gave you some really good opportunities. So you've, you're, you're mid-teens. Um, what obviously you, you're doing life what what led you to then leave the UK and scoot over the pond to Australia yeah. well um, I was I was married I, I've been married twice now. but my first marriage um, my wife's sister of the time uh, they had decided to come to Australia so you were married in the UK I was married in First. the UK yeah yeah okay and I had a daughter um, who was born on arrival just on arrival in Australia yeah called Julie and um, yeah, so uh, my sister-in-law at the time was emigrating and they, they were saying how good it was and I ran our shirt sleeves in the middle of winter and <laughs> all that sort of thing <laughs> and so I thought that sounds good. It sounds pretty good. That. Give that a crack. Give, so, so that was obviously Australia. Yeah. So how old were you when you were married and had your first child, Julie? Uh, your first, 21. Your daughter, Julie? 21. 21. Yeah. So, and most of, the, most of the family has followed that suit. I mean, almost everyone seems to be married with the kids by 2021. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's us that have broken the mould and extending that on to our 30s, 20, late 20s. Yeah, 30s. yeah, you want to cling to mum. And dad, and we're 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 we're, yeah. we're enjoying yeah. taking more time before yeah. we family up. Yeah. But well, as we um, you guys started much was, younger. It was just the the expected thing, I think. Yeah, you know that by about twenty years old, you'd be married, married, married up with the kids. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. There you go. Whew. And for girls, it was that has certainly kids. changed now, hasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> By 20, so, you're like, all right, just go figure yourself out. You're still basically a kid, you know, go to yeah. uni maybe or have a gap year and go have some fun, go travel. And yeah. look, yeah, think about settling down maybe later. Don't worry about that. That's not, it's not, it's not, yeah. even, like, it's not even like a thought, really, to most people these days at 20, for sure. So uh, coming over here was the biggest step of my life. And so where did you land? You went straight to... To Sydney. So, so you landed in Sydney. And so yeah. you, okay, so you started in Sydney. The, well, came by boat. So you, oh, you didn't fly, you came by I boat. Came yeah. by boat and called in at different, different countries on the way. Um, well, that would have been a bit of fun. Yeah. Come down by France and Spain. Some turbulent times on the sea and then into the Mediterranean and then down through the Suez Canal 
where you've got... Um, oh, that would have been great. Yeah. You got the Suez Canal. Canal, I'm surprised that was even open. Yeah, we're doing good here. We're doing all right. We're doing all right. Just making sure yeah. it's all recording still, yeah. Uh, the Suez Canal, hold on, is that the man-made canal? Yes, Why? it is. It's the man-made canal? Yeah. And that was open then? It was open. Um, When's this? Is this like 19... Oh, what? What would it be? How old were you? What was your year of birth? 1943. 43, okay, so this is about so 1950 50 something. 60. 60. Yeah, 60. 65. 1965. When I, when I, when I landed here. Alright, 1965. So, yeah, so I set off in six, December 64, and it took about four weeks to get here. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, you, you travelled through all the, past the Arabia, you could see the, the desert dwelling people with their bags on their heads, walking along with their long cloaks on and stuff. It was really good, really good. And then the first port of call was Perth. Yeah. And then um, I can remember getting off the boat at Perth because they allowed you to get off the first place. Getting off the boat at Perth and uh, the Australian accent was totally different from, from mine at the time. I had a broad Lancashire accent and um, I thought I'm sure nobody's going to understand me. So I'm standing in this queue waiting Somebody, uh, uh, there was a van there selling ice cream and packets of chips and stuff. So this guy says, I want a packet of chips, please. So I got there. I want a packet of chips, please. Sounded so boring to me, but it, it made sense to him, you know. <laughs> So I'll just, whatever he said, I'll just repeat that. <laughs> and you, you learn the Australian language, and the first thing you learn is it's payday on Friday. That's, 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 yeah. Payday on Friday. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right, so let's, say, let's get, all right, time to get some juicy stuff here. Um, Oh, okay, what type of, uh, before we get into the, the juicy stuff, what, did you have any particular interests or hobbies as a kid when you moved to Australia? Like, what, what interested you as a youngster back then? Um, playing sports, um, yeah, soccer, cricket, um, that, that was interesting to me. Yeah. Um, Um, my uncles made me a sledge, which um, I used to um, use during winter. I'd go on, because the area around our town um, was nice and clear, hill, hills, even though the town itself was grimy, they had a boundary around the town outside which nobody could buy a block of land and build anything because it was a, they used to call it the green belt right around. and it and it kept kept most of the country green you know yeah yeah, yeah. so um yeah all right so we <laughs> We've, I used to go to we've been born in 1943, uh, got tuberculosis, spent eight years or some six, seven six, years of your six, life yes. in a bed, locked down, strapped, left that, went to school uh, of your year level, year three, four, it must be around four or five because um, of your age maybe, and then caught up, excelled, got into a prestigious school, learned some trades and some skills, some chemistry skills. Yeah. 
um, obviously that's where your your resource of knowledge uh, that's where it stems from. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, got married, had a kid by twenty one. Julie, hey Julie, and um, the your wife's name at the time's sister was like, "That's it, we're going to Oz," and you all decide, "Yep, we're going to go with you." Crack on. Land in yeah, Sydney. We'll, we'll see you there. We're yeah. going. We're going over as well. Yeah. Your new life begins in, in Australia. You're into cricket and some sports, loving a sports kind of lifestyle, which makes sense. I have what to say, Australia's for, known for. Even though it was the biggest step, it was the best, best thing that ever happened to me. Coming here, um, and growing up, you could say from. 21 onwards, um, it, it was a, it was a great great adventure. Oh yeah, you know, yeah, that would have been awesome. Yeah, yeah, it's fun. This was like to me, it was like real frontier stuff <laughs> because in those days, yeah, um, I say in those days as if it's a long time ago, but it's surprising that they didn't have a lot of sealed roads. When she started going in, a bit further out, yeah. little dirt tracks, and dirt tracks until you came within uh, a mile or so of a town, and then it would be sealed. Yeah. So the dust didn't get carried into the town. Did it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So where do you remember your first area? What was the what was the location called in Sydney that you first lived in? Oh, it's a place called St Mary's. St Mary's, yeah. Yeah, and it was. Yeah, um, I remember a street near a house there. Eh? Street or house? Do you remember the the road, the street name, and the, the house street, number? Yeah, the street was in uh, Carpenter Street in St Mary's, and the we managed to get a um, a place to rent for three pounds five a week. Now that's equivalent to um six dollars fifty six dollars six dollars fifty a yeah. week for rent the place itself <laughs> it was built as a, a, a bush house like um a, a holiday house really originally and the it was clad in sheet metal on the outside and the inside walls were canvas. <laughs> right. Painted canvas. Yeah. A painted canvas. Yeah. That's different. And um, <laughs> that's different. Yeah, they had a big shed there. It was on about two acres. Oh, that's good that's good size yeah. land. Yeah. That's right. Cool. Yeah. All right. The part we all were all wanted to know. Obviously, the first marriage ended. Yeah. How did you meet Nan? Carol? Mm. Uh, talk us through that. Well, it was all quite accidental. Um, I, I'd, I'd been asked to go to a party. Uh, our family was having a party. Some family members of ours were having a party. And they said, why don't you come? Because there was only uh, me and Julie at the time. <clears throat> come on, get out, come and party, you know. So we went and um, um, one of the people there was Carol. And uh, she she was with a, uh, a, ma a male escort. Um, <laughs> a male escort. Yes. <laughs> so uh, she had a male friend with her. Yeah. Yes. A male escort might come across no, a no, little no, bit no, different no, no, today. No, 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 no. <laughs> See, none had an escort. They were friends. No, 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 no. Scrub that. Scrub that. <laughs> wink, wink. It, it was it was a friend of hers. A male and friend. And he yeah. says, "I've been asked to go to this party." And I don't know anybody. Do you want to come? So, because they were friends, so yeah. they went. 
And um, before the night was out, we were um, we were sitting on the opposite sides of the room. So hey, Mum. Hi. Hey, Joe. Sit on the opposite sides of the room and, and then gradually got to talk and get up and dance and um, had a great night and I, I, the more I learned about her the more impressed I was with her. She was a, a single mother bringing three children up. And, um, of course, they are being doing a good job too. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I was really impressed. And uh, she said, "We could we could get together and go out sometime. For, you know, we could go out on picnics or something." I said, "That sounds all right. Sounds good." Anyway. Um, it was a winter's night, I remember, it was bitterly cold and it was time to leave and so I said, see ya, and she, she came outside in, in her bare feet, it was on the freezing pavement there, to say good, good night and um, I was impressed that she'd made that effort on such a night, cold night. And um, yeah, so the following day, she gave me a, a phone number, which I wrote down on the back of a cigarette packet, which I've got somewhere around still. Um, and I phoned her the following day and the rest is history, really. That was it? Yeah. Yeah, we kept so seeing she came at, So you met at the party, you yeah. got connected, she said goodbye to you in bare feet. Yeah. In a cold night, which just thought, you just thought, you know what? You lady, I like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, um, yeah. So I, I went to her house uh, and she came over to our place. And we got, yeah, wasn't too long before um, we were talking about getting married. And what year was that? What you guys, what, when did you guys get married on the spot here? 79? 1979. 1979. Yeah, we met in 78. So it was... Uh, one year, one year married, bam, get it done. Just over a year, yeah, 14 months. Oh, yeah, 15 and that's, I mean, that's, so you had a kid of your own, she had three kids, bit of a, you know, it's a bit of an undertaking, taking on three new kids, single mom. Yeah. It's, How was it like, okay, so now you got a joint family, you're all living together yeah. in Sydney. How were, how, how, what were some of your fondest memories of those days? Well, they weren't all fond memories. <laughs> Because there times were a bit different back then. Eh? People were a bit different back then. No, it's not that. It's that we have two families, totally different, that came together, and we had to blend together, and. Um, just share each other's life and they'd been used to doing things their way and we were used to doing things our way yeah and so there was a lot of uh, tensions to yeah there was a lot of tension at first but we it, it, it was worth it was worth hanging in to me there was no there was no not ever any uh, thought of giving up. Well, I'm glad you never did pass. Because of things get tough. And this is a lesson for you and anybody else that 
the losers in this life are the people who give up. Yeah. You have to keep going. You have to keep going. Never give up. Yeah, keep and trucking through the pain. And you get anything you want. Yeah. You'll achieve it. Because it would have been pretty, pretty challenging. I mean, a lot of emotional challenges. And it, in some ways, it would have been more convenient and easier. Just go, ah, you know what? This is too difficult. I kind of enjoyed the way things were with just me doing my life. But of course, then you miss out on finding a new part of yourself, I suppose. Um, fighting through yeah. those initial challenges to form yeah. something new about yourself that maybe you, you didn't know existed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, you can imagine, like, Julie, my daughter, had, had things. It was just me and her. And so... Um, she did things all the wrong way, so yeah, that, and didn't want to change it. And now she's got a shared dad. Yeah, a shared dad. Yeah. Um, so there were there were some rough times, but um, we got through. We got through. And when you look back. It, it was such a great experience bringing them up, you know. You look, I look back and I, I think of all the things we went through and all the times like going to playing in that um, big thing that was on here. Um, Expo. The Brisbane Expo? There was an Expo here. Brisbane Expo. Oh, was that the one with the big kangaroo? Yeah. That big wooden all kangaroo? That sort of Wasn't that the um, we Commonwealth Games? Something, something like that. No, that, that, the kangaroo was the Games. Yeah. And this, this wasn't the Games, it was a World Expo or something. A World Expo. That's what I was talking about before my time. <laughs> anyway, yeah, we, we go. Places like that, and Dream World, and Sea World, and yeah. Um, used to go fishing a lot with uh, Dean, especially because the oh, Dean was in the fishing. Scott, it's not that Scott didn't like fishing; he didn't have the patience because nothing was happening straight away. But um, we. Uh, Dean seemed to um, be more into it, you know. and uh, besides, Scott was more like going out with his mates. He, he made friends very easy. Yeah. And he used to go out with his mates a lot and playing. I used to coach him at uh, soccer at one stage. The under. Under eight, I think it was. Um, we joined the local soccer club down in Sydney and uh, Penrith. And um, yeah, we had a, a good, a good old year. That year. Yeah. And uh, where was so? When did you guys move up to Queensland, the Gold Coast? We moved up in. Um, 1982. And what led that move? Well, uh, I, I, I was beginning to think that it would be better because we lived at my place, you see, and, and when you, where you've got mine. Uh, they'd sold their house and, and lived with, with us. And so I thought, what we really need is to get somewhere independent so it belongs to all of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So I thought we'd, we'd try up here. So we went to Brisbane to start with, went to a caravan park, and for a week or so, and did some 
um, looking around different places around Brisbane and down here. And luckily, um, Margaret, uh, Carol's sister, said, well, if you're moving up, come stay with us until you get your own place on the coast, on the Gold Coast. It's a lot better. Yeah. So we did that. We moved in with her. And after about 10 days or so, we had a rented house and uh, I had a job up here and everything just took off. I remember going around um, the school to get the kids into school and we, we came to Scott School and um, the headmaster there he was saying, no, we would be delighted to have him just Yes, we'll show you around and he's showing us around and telling us about different things. He said, as a matter of fact, you can stay now if you like and get adjusted to it. And um, see what you think, you know. So I said, that's a good idea. We'll see you later, mate. You stay here. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like that school anyway, it just happened. Yeah. We went to another school. And what about Joe, Mum? She yeah, she went to um um one in Emory Plains. Where my where so they went to they all went to separate schools. Uh, well, now, up here, while we were down in Sydney, they used to go to their own school um, around Seven Hills. And then when they moved to, to our place, after we got married, um, they, had, they went to the local school in uh, Emory Plains, yeah. just outside Canada. So, yeah, they liked it. And that's when you bought your, was this when you bought your first, that home in Churn Park? When did you buy that house in Churn Park? Uh, Churn Park, yeah. Well, first of all, we went to um, a place in Cambari Avenue to rent. Yeah. And it was a two-story place. And um, it was a great place because there was so much space underneath. You know, you could play table tennis and everything and, and still have to park cars at each end, you know. And um, it was pretty bushy in those days because uh, Olsen Avenue, uh, yeah, Olsen Avenue wasn't, wasn't built. It wasn't built then, it was all bush. Um, so we used to go a few snakes around and stuff like that. But um, I can imagine being frightened, anybody being frightened by a snake. Yeah. But Scott was our toughie. He was our tough guy, I think. And I can remember one day we were sitting on the lounge and he saw this mouse dash out from under the lounge and he jumped on the lounge. He jumped on the lounge and he's running away in the bloody the mouse committed suicide, it ran straight over the balcony. And <laughs> <laughs> so, it's funny though. Uh, well Pa, you've certainly learned a uh very unique life, huh? I think that's a pretty unique life, I've got to tell you. I think we all, we all love unique lives. There's no, no two lives the same way. That's right, yeah, yep. We all have unique lives. We yeah, yeah. Quite a different one. You, you had a, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You had some cool, yeah. you had some experiences that not a lot of people would, would experience. Yeah. And I think that's certainly 
I mean, I think with those early years of having to catch up and develop and learn and not be the guy that, you know, would be expected to be left behind, you've never been that guy. Um, you've always been the guy part that can be called on. You know, like you've been that, that, that guy that everyone in the family can go, yeah, go see Pa, he'll know how to do it. Pa will get you through that. He can, you've always had a very family-oriented disposition about yourself always had enough time you've always been someone that since well in my time always had time for family always make time always available to help and support and i tell you that has been yeah. a real good thing to model in my own my own my own life yeah i, I just like helping people if someone needs a, a hand they don't know how to do something you don't rubbish them you say come and i'll show you yeah and after they've, after they've seen how to do things, I can make whatever it is I want, or build whatever it is I want. Um, they, they've got that knowledge then, and they can, you know, use it for their own purposes. I just, I just like doing it. I, I wouldn't have minded being a teacher, if things would have been different. Yeah, you could have been a teacher. Yeah, if things would have been, if, if I'd have had an earlier start to education, perhaps. But. Well, you've been a teacher in your own life. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Alright, let's have some fun. Um, fondest memories, and we'll, we'll start from Nan, we'll work our way down. <laughs> uh, what, what a, maybe what's your fondest memory of, um, just some of your fondest memories, maybe like the high, top two that you can think of, of... Um, of your wife, my nan, Carol. Yeah. Uh, some of the fondest memories have been with with friends. Um, we had two great friends, Jen and Peter, and we used to go away with them, and um, we. We had some fantastic holidays together. Um, I think that, that they were the, be the best, the best times. We travelled all over the place. They had um, uh, a place similar to this uh, down in New South Wales called Woolhope. Yep. Yeah. And. Um, yeah, we used to go on holidays with them and uh, get up to all kinds of mischief. <laughs> yeah. oh. Some of which I can't tell you. No. <laughs> all right, Nan, that's, you can tell us the stories there, Nan. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah so... Um, yeah, it's hard to, it's hard to pick. Um, what's uh, what's some of the qualities that you've admired most about um, Nan? Uh, if you'd have seen how she used to, when she was bringing her own children up, kids she she had a house but she was battling to pay the mortgage and, and bring the kids up at the same time and she just had this tenacity it's um Nobody was going to come between them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, that's what I admire most. She's she did anything for her kids, and um, she made sure they had everything they needed, even though they didn't have much. She yeah. always made sure they got what they needed. Mm. Yeah. And I really admired that. 
and um, I thought um, those qualities we could use them. Yeah. You know. Yeah. In our I family. Could, you're like I could. Yeah. I could that would be good. That would be, I could work in a family. Yeah. All right. All right, moving down the ladder, uh, Julie's. Julie. Some of your fondest memories of Julie and. Well, yeah, she she was pretty uh, intelligent um, in most things, like at school. She was really good. Um, the last words. I've always said to Julie, I said, I love you. Whenever I left her house, I love you too. Good. Action! <laughs> and action. We're back. Go All on. right, so we're going down the list. We've said thin things about Nan, Julie. Next person on the list, obviously your eldest daughter. And of course, when you married Nan, you got three extra yes. kids. Yes. That has been great. I, I finished up with two sons and two daughters. And that uh, that is priceless. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. and of course they all love you so much. I love we them. all do. I so love much. Them too. I love them all. Yeah. All right. Continuing on with um, no. fondest memories about Joanne Turner, my mum. Yeah. She. Uh, she has amazed me in her life um, as she's come along. When she was going to school, she wasn't a brilliant scholar and she found it, she was happy if she just got by. And then um, she had the opportunity of uh, going to university and qualifying to become a registered nurse. And she used to come around with her homework and we'd sit down and go over stuff that she didn't understand. Um, for many, many weeks, months, and she'd come out the other end, and she passed. She became a state registered nurse. She did it. And she did it. She did. She did it. I didn't do it. She did the exam. Yeah. She you did all the dormitory work. I just pointed her in the right direction on um, explaining. Um, some of the terminology that they use, yeah, yeah, you know, in uh, universities. And how was mum when, in the early years, you know, um, when when the families joined? I remember you mentioned the families joined, of course. How was it? How was she back then with you? She was. She was all right. She was very cautious. Like, um, I remember one of her first sayings was, you smack me and I'll tell my dad. <laughs> uh, this is a good start. <laughs> well, of course, she ended up making you feel quite... Yeah, I finished up being dad. Yeah. 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 But to get back to her nursing, not only has she qualified to be a nurse, but I've seen firsthand 
with my illness. I've seen firsthand as you can speak on even terms with doctors. Yeah. They will ask her questions in a language I don't know. And she will she will come back there yeah, with all the medical terms and she, she you've got to see her in action. It's, it's, you love it's it? It's amazing, I love it. And as people say, if if you put if you help someone, it always comes back. It comes back to you. Yeah. What is it? I got a little spider. It comes back to you in some way. And she's she's helped me through this illness nearly every day. Nearly every day she's she's either here or phoning me. Um, how do you feel today? Shouldn't be doing that, you should be doing this, you know. And it's, it, it's paid off. All the work that I've put in earlier has paid off many times over. Yeah. Yeah. You she's, sound like you're pretty proud. She, I am. She's proved herself. Yeah. She's proved herself. She proved herself capable. To be so capable of doing it. Yeah. When before, she didn't have the, um, uh, the belief in herself. She didn't believe in herself enough in the earlier days. Yeah, right. And now, and now she's shining out there. So that's awesome, Pa. Yeah. You, you mentioned see, um, before. You have to it. see her in action for these people. <laughs> yeah, I love yeah. it. Uh, yeah. so and you mentioned to me before that um, you were saying how she made you feel like you were part of the family. Um, and, you know, uh, and she was part of my family. Yeah. And I was part of her family. She was the first one to call me dad. The wow. boys never did, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> but she she's all she always called me dad. She always seen you as dad. Yeah. From from the very beginning. Yeah. And never dropped it. Yeah. So we we've bonded pretty good as Father and daughter. I love it. Yeah. What are the fondest memories of Dean? Many, because he was at home a lot. He wasn't one for going out. So we got we got all his um, um his living uh, around home and. Um, he used to he used to keep to himself a lot, just watching TV in his room. Um, but he he would it wasn't it wasn't just any old TV programs. He'd be watching animal programs, nature programs, and he he he'd give you a lecture now on on any animal or bird or whatever. And he, uh, he'll tell you how it's all put together out there. He knows. It, it all goes in. It just, yeah. He had his own way of coming around to things. Again, he had um, uh, a bit of difficulty um, learning at first when he was going to school. And so we used to um, sit down and read. We'd sit down and read a book or a newspaper or to make it more interesting for him, yeah. a sports article in, on the back page of a paper or something. Just go for half an hour or so and that's it. And he's gradually Come up, yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you why, you wouldn't, you look, you see Dean now, you'd never think he, he struggled learning, he's such a smart guy. No, 
Yeah. Very intelligent. He is. And yeah. he knows he knows what he wants. And you've not been a man to go on holidays, but of course you got you guys did a, a big holiday together through Canada and everything. Oh yeah. yeah. He didn't think we'd go. He, <laughs> he he was the one who was pressing for it. He said we should look at some other holidays like that. Yeah. And then I said, yeah, that looks true. He said, you're bullshitting. You know, you never go on anything like this. I said, yeah, we went. Yeah. And we did, we went. So you went on a great holiday together. Went to Alaska and Canada. Great holiday. Great holiday, that. It was a real eye opener for all of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, Scott. Scott. Right. He, um, Scotty has, has spent a lot of his life, um, how can I put it, outside, get, getting his life experiences mainly from outside the house. He's a go-getter. Yeah. And he mixes with the meal. Loves action. Yeah. Loves action. And um, he used to kind of um, bungle his way in to, <laughs> with his, you know, to be part of whatever's going on. Um, but and always come across as being tough. It's really, really a very tough guy. And um, but he's he's got a heart of butter. A heart of gold is really. And I've seen him particularly um, lately with my illness. Um, I've seen him now. Um, yeah, that crumbled me. Yeah. 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 The first time I've seen him let go. Yeah. Mm. I know he's a, he's a, a macho guy, but he's yeah. Well, you're making me tear up. <laughs> sure. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. that's good. Yeah. You want a moment, or you want to keep cracking on? We have to have a stretch. Oh, we'll have a, we'll have a break. Sorry. Let's have a break. Okay. We'll be right back after this mess. Oh. <laughs> I'll end. Well, we're at we're at the end of the uh, this this video. Um, is there anything you'd like to say to the family? Uh, any major pearls of wisdom? I mean, you mentioned earlier about, um, you know, when there's some things you really value and you can see the good in people that things might get tough, but to keep really uh, charging on and not giving up on those things. Um, and Para, I can say that, um, on behalf of myself and I, I'm confident I'm saying this on behalf of the other the rest of the family that you've really been a, a fantastic role model for all of us you've been a good honorable man um, pa, you've, you've led the way for the family to follow you and Nan have both led the way on, 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 on setting the values of, of, of family time on honoring your parents and your and, and by honoring your kids, them honoring you back, and seeing that example has flown down. You can see that all the way through, down to our, uh, you know, the grandkids now and, and whatnot. Mm. And I could just say, I say thank you so much for being who you are, for showing and caring so much. I don't need anything. Just being the way you are is my reward, seeing the way you've come in. Uh, and, thanks, and, and the rest of them as well. Yeah. 
That's my rule. Uh, you stay in the family. This, this speaks for itself. We did all right. You did all right. Yeah, we did all right. We, we did, did all right. All right. Yeah. 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 Um. Yeah. I, I, that was, I guess that was the main thing in my life. Because, um, uh, my early years, my mother was divorced while I was in that hospital. And I used to talk to him, there's my father. Oh, he's working. He's working. Uh, uh. But um, when we got together, when Mum and I got together, we decided that we were going to do it. And anyone that comes after your the, kids, the kids that we had, then, um, family, being family and helping each other was the main thing. Um, it gives, I guess, it gives me a big kick that it, it, it it gives everyone this self-respect, you know, they belong. Yeah. We all belong together. Yeah. And um, I think that's the main thing. We do belong together. We belong together. Yeah. Awesome. That's what I would say. Yeah. That's what you'd say? Yeah. All right, Pa. Okay. I love you. I love you too, man. <laughs> and I think that's a wrap. <laughs> that's a wrap. That's a wrap. <laughs>